Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Violet Sia from Enterprise DB Asia Pacific and Japan Marketing. I will be your host today for this webinar on No Time to Waste, Migrate from Oracle to EDB Postgres in Minutes. I am joined by EDB Senior Development Manager, Prashan Agarwal, who will take us through on migrating from Oracle to EDB Postgres, including doing a demo for you. Before we get started, I want to go through some housekeeping items. This presentation is being recorded. We will be sharing the recording along with the slides after the broadcast. Your lines are all currently muted, but if you have a question, please feel free to submit it in the question panel. Today's session is scheduled for one hour, but we expect the presentation to last approximately 45 minutes and there will be some time for Q&A. If we do not have time to address all questions, we will follow up afterwards with any attendee whose question was not answered. Um, I also want to inform everyone that uh, since uh, most of us are in lockdown mode uh, because of COVID-19, both Prashan and I are actually working from home. So uh, there may be instances of internet or Wi-Fi uh, instability and we ask uh, for your patience. We sincerely hope that there will be no disruptions to this webinar. So uh, sit back now and um, let me pass the mic over to Prashan. Over to you, Prashan. Thank you very much, Violet, for that. Uh, so I hope, I hope you guys are safe and healthy wherever you are. So in today's presentation, we'll see uh, how easily you can migrate uh, your Oracle database uh, to the ADB Postgres. And it doesn't take days or hours even. It is just uh, minutes of work that you need to do. So uh, briefly, I'll go over the agenda that we will be covering today. We'll go over the EDB overview. We'll talk about who is EDB uh, and what does it offers. We'll, we'll see the top uh, reasons why people migrate from one database to another, not from Oracle to EDB process, but in general, why do people migrate from one database to another? Uh, we'll see what are the different components for a successful migration project. Uh, then we'll concentrate on uh, which battles you need to take, which is the first uh, few battles that you really need to fight it for. It's not that each and every schema or each and every project you do for the migration, you start with the toughest one. So we'll see how you can pick up the right battle uh, initially so that you get confidence about your migration uh, stories. Uh, in terms of uh, 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 migration, Postgres database, and the management and the integration tools, what does ADB has to offer? So we'll go over the range of uh, different products, uh, just a, a brief in terms of what uh, ADB has to offer, what does ADB brings to the table for, for its customer. Then I'll be doing a live demo and uh, uh, fingers crossed, uh, let's hope it goes well. Uh, and as Wallet said, just bear with us, maybe if it's a low bandwidth, issue or something. So I'll try my level best to uh, complete the demo. And then after all this, what would be the next your next step uh, uh, to migrate yourself, uh, do the migrations yourself? All right, so with that, uh, I would like to go over who is ADB. So uh, ADB is a global leader in open source based Postgres software and services. So ADB had been a pioneer and uh, we take the best of the open source database Postgres, which is a Postgres database. And we add the enterprise requirements on top of it. So be it be your high availability requirement, be it be your support, your manageability, your uh, migration capabilities, your replication capabilities. ADB had been a leader into all these areas. It gives you a complete ecosystem uh, around your database. Uh, we founded uh, in 2004 and uh, we had been recognized uh, as the RDBMS leader or the relational database leader by Gartner and Forrester. Uh, globally, we have a customer base of around 4,000 plus, uh, which is increasing as of, uh, uh, on day by day basis. Uh, we have grown to a 500 plus employees across the world. So this number uh, about 
a quarter ago was 300 plus. So recently we have expanded our capacity to help our customers and support our customers. We have our offices worldwide. Uh, in all the geographies we are located. And uh, uh, we are the major contributors to the forces community, the open source community. So along with what we do as a proprietary EPAS or at the advanced server uh, work, we do contribute a lot back to the community as well. So one of the next slide I'll like to share uh, the Gartner's uh, magic contract. Uh, so if you see, uh, Enterprise DB is is the only only and only uh, open source based database that is there into the uh, Gartner's Magic Quadrant, and ADB has been recognized for seven years in a row. Uh, from Niche Player, I believe a couple of years back from Niche Player, we have moved to the Challengers uh, Quadrant. So this is very very important if you uh, have to choose between the available uh, RDBMS systems or the software systems in the market that uh, many companies relies on the Gartner uh, studies, right? So this clearly shows that we are on the right track and right path going for, forward. Uh, next, I would like to have a little poll question. And uh, here is the question. Uh, Wallet, could you just uh, pop this up? Can we we'll give you a few seconds to tell us uh, your answers before we stop the poll? Um, okay, um, Prashan, according to the poll, um, majority, 80% of, of the attendees um, are not using, uh, have not used EDB migration portal before. Only 20% say yes. So this is the answer. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Valerian. Thank you so much, audience. This gives me a clear picture that how or how in depth I need to go for the migration portal. And I think I need to go much more in depth for the for the 80% of the attendees. All right. Uh, so going to the next slide, one second. Okay. Uh, why you would like to migrate from one database to another? This is not migrating yourself from Oracle to Postgres, but for from any uh, source database to any target database, why do people migrate? Uh, our study says that these are the five, topmost five reasons that people would like to migrate from uh, one database to another. So first and foremost is definitely the total cost of ownership. So specifically, if I talk about Oracle to EDB Postgres, uh, the cost of licensing uh, the source database might be two and too high, which you would like to reduce. And uh, migrating or moving it to the another database of uh, maybe an open source or maybe a low cost database would be a good solution for the organizations uh, to uh, make their systems uh, uh, working as is, and as well as at the same time, utilize that uh, uh, capital somewhere else into some other innovations. So this is one of the primary reasons that people do migrate from one database to another. The second foremost reason uh, we figured out is uh, people would like to leverage the innovations, right? So maybe your source database doesn't do that often releases, it doesn't give, add the functionalities that often. So if that is the case and that does not match your uh, requirements, your up, uh, upcoming market requirement. So there could be the reason that you would like to uh, leverage the innovations of the target database and you would like to move from one database to another one. The third one, uh, and I think which is a very, very important also uh, that the organ system needs, right? Uh, as we all know that uh, all the organization grows uh, uh, and they, their systems also need to be upgraded, right? So it could be very well possible that what you have today may not be able to just give you the sustenance or may not be able to work fine tomorrow. Uh, 
so just give you an example maybe uh, earlier the days when people used to uh, have their databases on excel sheets right any 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 workbook sheets or maybe on the microsoft access right but as a system needs go that may not be sufficing their uh, their application requirement so there on they uh, they shifted to the another uh, uh, rd rdbms RDMS maybe right uh, and that further needs to be upgraded like based on all the your business requirements so outgoing system needs is also one of the very very important point that you would like to move uh, from one database to another or from one system to the another uh, the next two also are uh, what we have seen people have migrated uh, themselves or their applications from one database to another is like the software vendors the source software vendor does their support or or a particular version uh, comes to end of life and then the new version cost you a lot so th th those were also the reason that people do migrate from one database to another uh, the next one is uh, a little uh, surprised one for me that there are strategic decisions that the technology uh, uh, takes into the company so maybe at, at a high level the CTO decides for this year we would have to use uh, this database this version and all that so probably those are also a few of the times the reason that you migrate to a data uh, a different database so these are the uh, things uh, that why you would like to migrate to adb postgres so this is this is a study that is has been conducted by uh, idc and they published this in 2016 and they say that i mean the numbers themselves speak but uh, they say that if you move your uh, database from oracle to the adb postgres uh, you get back a return of 168% over the 3 years of all your investment the complete payback period is as less as only four months, right? Uh, the best part is ADB Postgres is an Oracle compatible database. So you did not to uh, invest uh, uh, into training or uh, uh, grooming your uh, uh, skilled DBA into a Postgres uh, uh, compatible native things, right? All the Oracle syntaxes, a major of the Oracle syntaxes that works in Oracle also works on ADB Postgres. So the DBA staff time required for the deployment and configuration is 8% less. Uh, the cost per database is also significantly down by 65%. So this had been conducted by EDC, uh, IDC to uh, after studying all our customers. Uh, the next slide talks about the innovations. The I believe the second most reason why people do migrate from one database to another, and these are the few few key things why you would like to migrate to ADB Postgres or why your organization should move to uh, Postgres from Oracle or maybe from any other database for the time being. Uh, as we all know, I mean, my Postgres is a very vibrant community, right? It is a very active community. Uh, Postgres does a major release every year. They come up with uh, innovations, new ideas, new capabilities in their databases every year, right? They are the most asset compliant database uh, in the relational world. Uh, they have a number of uh, data types. Uh, uh, it's not only the relational one, but also the document based, so JSONB data type, the key value pairs, your uh, uh, post GIS requirements, right? Where you need to store your uh, uh, geo stationary locations your money data type, your network data types. You could actually store your IPv4 and IPv6 and the MAC addresses into your Postgres database using the data types, the native data types. You need not to go anywhere else, you need to uh, install any other extensions to get these features. They are all natively built within Postgres and hence in ADB Postgres. You got uh, foreign data wrappers. You have streaming and the logical applications right so there's so many things that uh, the community and adb keep on doing and adding to the postgres uh, to make it an innovation leader 
and it's not that we release or the posters get released uh, uh, three uh, once in three year, once in five years, right? We do these innovations every and every year. Yes, we have to pay a cost to it. That if you have to use, you might need to upgrade, but that upgrade path is uh, not also that tough. If you want to just move your yourself from one version to the higher version. So with that said, uh, going to the next slide, uh, which talks about how does ADB compatibility uh, with Oracle uh, talks about, right? So what we have found is when you take migrations, right? Your, your schema, your structure of your database is one thing, right? So if you talk about your details for uh, uh, tables, your details for uh, view, your details for packages, procedures, uh, materialized view, those are one thing, right? But you also need the data along with it, right? So you need to have your tables loaded with all your source data into the target or whatever you plan to migrate to. But just having data schema and the data is 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 part of the way. It doesn't uh, it doesn't tell you the entire or doesn't give you the entire migratability, right? You need to have your code blocks also. So when I say code blocks, we talk about uh, procedures, functions, uh, package bodies, type type bodies, right? So those pieces of code should also be migrated, and those should be in a working condition, right? So you cannot uh, no, unless and until you really go and execute that migrated code, you cannot figure out whether it has worked fine or not. So that is still, I will say, it's the most of the way that uh, yes, your schema and data and the code is migrated, right? Now that is something is only for for the database, right? But your database alone cannot do any uh, everything, right? You have your applications, your system connecting to that database, and they connect via the interfaces. So, uh, whatever language your application or your system is in, be it uh, in C, in Java, in .NET, right? You need a, a driver for that. You need a driver to connect to that database for that. So, those interfaces are also equally important when you talk about migrations. So, uh, schema, data, code, and interface. All these four parts, in my opinion, in our opinion, are very, very important if you would like to migrate. Uh, there's one more block uh, that should come out besides the inter interfaces and that I did not put up purposely is your application code. Uh, very rarely, and if you would be lucky if this happens, uh, we saw that uh, just moving these four parts or the, just syncing these four uh, uh, four uh, constructs like schema, data, code, and interface, your application works fine. Very rarely. And if that happens, I mean, you're a lucky one. But otherwise, you need to make some changes to your application code as well to make it work with a different database now, with a different database vendor now, right? So that is also a small piece. But the majority of when you talk about migrations, your migrations from one database to another one, you talk about these four blocks. Importantly, you spend almost 80 to 90 percent of your time over this. And very important, like the migrating code procedures functions might look easy. That okay, fine. I see the code, I know it, I can change it in five minutes. But if you actually try to change it and try to execute it, it may take a little longer. So which seems to be easy. Uh, specifically for the for the PL SQL constructs, uh, those are not. So for that, it is very very important that you choose your battle uh, rightly. Uh, and this study is done by a group Tech Validate, which says that approximately 50% of migrations are easy. When I say easy, it is not a simple click of a migration. You still need to do a little of work, a very, very minimal work, maybe, right? Uh, rest of 30% uh, are, uh, are asking for your uh, more involvement, right, from the DBA side, from the application side. 
application developer side right they require some time they require more work to make them work uh the rest of 20 percent we saw them are or, or, or the tech validate saw them as a difficult one to migrate now if imagine you picked up randomly any of your source system that you would like to migrate and it happened to fall into this 20 percent bucket what would happen uh you will end up losing the confidence into the migration tools number one you will end up lose the confidence into into the target uh, database that this doesn't work you'll go back to your uh, system architect or the or the uh, or the CTO and say them that this doesn't work. We cannot go with ahead with that. So you need to really very very carefully choose uh, what uh, what POC you would be doing on or which schemas you should be taking on for testing any of the migration tools or any of the target systems, right? So we expect that uh, or we suggest that uh, you always take up the easier ones first. You try to get uh, hands-on with the target systems. You understand the target databases. You understand the migration tools, how it works, what exactly it does, how it uh, does, and what level of com compatibility it gives. And post that, make your decisions. For for the thirty percent, it will require little of work, and rest uh, thirty percent, twenty uh, percent, they may be more difficult and may require uh, a few days of efforts so with that uh, what does edb brings to the table uh, or what does edb or how does edb postgres makes it easy for you to just migrate your oracle systems to the edb postgres database so very important one is the ADB advanced server, uh, which is an Oracle compatible Postgres. So it is on top of the community Postgres, which has the natively built Oracle compatibility, right? So your, uh, for an example, if I give you an example, so your uh, uh, your da uh, data dictionaries, right? For all underscore. Uh, tables, users underscore tables, db underscore tables, they all work as is in ADB advanced server. Your packages, procedures, functions, they all work as is into ADB advanced server. You have native supports of majority of the 80% of the features that has been used in the market into advanced server. So ADB gives you uh, that database where you need not to worry about each and every construct but only a few of the constructs when you do the migration. Uh, ADB Cloud Database Service, uh, which runs your uh, advanced server, which is an Oracle compatible process in the cloud. Uh, you have migration tools, right? So ADB Migration Portal, which is a cloud-based uh, migrations for the schema and the store procedures. So we'll demo it uh, uh, in a few minutes, uh, this particular tool how you could make within the seconds you could see how much compatible or how much uh, 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 success ratio your uh, uh, schema would be if you would migrate to uh, adb postgres right uh, you have migration tool uh, migration toolkit which does a one-time data migration right and in case if you need a change data capture mechanism where you would like to have both the systems in sync right your source and the target you we have adb replication server which uh, takes care of very very large migrations with a minimal downtime uh and as i said earlier you really need your applications uh, uh drivers so that your uh, front-end applications uh are dot net java c c plus plus and other languages could connect to your database So for that we have uh, uh, OCL, JDBC, ODBC, .NET, ECPG+. These all connectors could be used uh, very well, and these have been developed by ADB Postgres to support the advanced server 
or to support even the Oracle compatibility. So this also gets released uh, as and when any new feature comes in, any new support comes in into the advanced server. Then as I said, like, it's not only the database and the migration tools, you need a complete ecosystem around your database, right? So you definitely need uh, someone to monitor your database, some tool to monitor your database. Maybe managing one or two database yourself is fine, but normally in any mid-size organizations have hundreds of their servers. You could not go and monitor each and every of them uh, yourself. You need a system for that. So ADB offers Postgres Enterprise Manager, PEM, which very well can take care of your monitoring needs and can alert you whenever any system is down or anything is not working as expected. If we have ADB failover managers. So normally for the high availability solutions, uh, you need to fail over in case your uh, master goes down, right? So ETB does have a solution for that as well. So if you see overall in terms of what offerings, and these are not the only tools that ETB offers. ETB offers a lot of other tools as well that we, I did not purposely mention uh, uh, on this slide just to avoid the change of focus. But otherwise, uh, ETB has a lot of tools uh, uh, around each and every part of the ecosystem. And out of this, how does migration portal works? So this is a brief uh, snippet of different steps uh, that you would like to do when you do the, uh, when you would like to use the migration portal. So before the demo, I would like to just go over this, uh, these steps to make you understand what all things you need to do if you plan yourself uh, a migration. And guys, it is free of cost. You right now after the uh, webinar, you can go and uh, just run your migration yourself. It doesn't cost anything. So as a first step, first you go on to the enterprisejv.com. If you have a login, you log in with your credentials. If you don't have a login, you create a user and launch the ADB Postgres migration portal. I'll show you from which. Uh, tab, you could launch your ADB process migration portal. Uh, the first and foremost you do is you download the DDL extractor. So this extractor utility, you actually run on your Oracle database, which extracts out all the DDL constructs, all the structural concept, constructs for tables, views, materialized view, procedures, functions. Uh, we do not take back your data. We do not want you to upload your data onto the under the migration portal, but obviously for the security reasons you would not like to. So for that, we only and only take the digital structures. You go back, upload this extracted file on a migration portal. When you click create and assess in the background, the engine does the analysis of your each and every DDL, your table DDL, your view DDL, your procedure DDL, right? It tries to figure out the incompatibilities. The best part of migration portal is it also tries to repair or to make the DDL compatible with the ADB process. That we do with the help of repair handlers. And I'll show you a couple of repair handlers that gets applied on, on, on one of the Oracle's uh, sample schema that comes with mostly with each and uh, all of the in installations. Uh, so with the HR schema, I'll, I'll uh, walk you through that. But we try to repair uh, the DDLs uh, with the help of repair handlers. Once it is all success and everything is good, you can download that schema on your local. Again, at this point of time, we do not uh, uh, want you, your credentials or your uh, uh, system ID and the, or the database ID and the passwords where you would like to migrate your database. So you can do it on your own. Uh, and we leave that up to the customers that they do not share us their target database username and passwords. So you could download uh, that DDL and run them on ADB Postgres. So within seconds, you will have your the complete structure as is in Oracle in your ADB Postgres database. Now, as I said, that is only one of the part of the way. The another part of the way is your data. And we do not 
want you to upload your data on migration portal. So what we do is we migrate your data, this source data using EDB uh, migration toolkit, which is MTK, which is an existing product uh, for a long time. So this MTK would take care of migrating from Oracle to your data from Oracle to ADB process. So these are the only steps you need. I took little of time to explain each and every step in detail so that the 80% of the audience could understand in depth how exactly it is to be done. Uh, ah, now time for the tough part. Demo. Uh, Let's see if things work fine. I'll okay. So as I said, what you do is you go to your identifiercb.com. Uh, you log in yourself. I'm already logged in out here. All right. Uh, you go to this tab, enterprise Postgres, and you can click here, uh, ADB Postgres Migration Portal. That will launch your uh, migration portal. Or otherwise, also uh, go to the portals tab menu, and here you could select ADB Postgres Migration Portal. So I'm already in uh, this tool, and as I said, the very first step that you would do is you would download a DDL extractor. So on the very left, sorry, on the very right of it, you could see the DDL DDL extractor. You simply can click on it. It will download it on your uh, default download location. So already, I have that downloaded here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go to the command prompt and wt and I'll connect to my 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 my. I'll connect to my Oracle database from here. All right, here we go. And I'll run that uh, downloaded script here. I'll show you what that script. It's all about how the it looks. So if I go ahead and download this script, it asks me for uh, which schema from the process or migrate. Right? So for the timing, I'll say the sample schema HR. I would like to migrate. What is the location of your uh, output file? I'll give it default. And do I need to uh, download or should I download the dependent objects as well? So very uh, frequently we have seen that your your system doesn't confine or your app database doesn't confine to only one database or one schema. It has to have a dependencies on the objects from the other, the other databases or other schemas. So in case if you forgot to mention it uh, uh, on the top, you could still say yes and you could extract all the all the uh, dependent objects in the script. So while the time this extracts all the synonym, DB links, sequences, and tables uh, from your source system, let me show you how does this extractor shows. Right. So if you see, it's a plain, simple English language. I mean, it's not masked or encrypted one. You could see what we are extracting. So this actually reads your meta tables, your uh, uh, DBMS underscore uh, uh, packages, meta packages uh, dot get detail function, and it extracts all the table definitions, view definitions uh, from uh, the source system. Now, what I did is, since the migration portal and the extractor had been so good that it it very seamlessly migrates all of your HR constructs uh, perfectly fine uh, to ADB process. What I did is I purposely introduced an error into one of the view. And also I have created a view which is dependent on that 
error view. So I'll I'll show you this this file also. Uh, how does it look? So if I click here, this one. So this is again you could see it yourself. What you will be uploading on migration portal? These are just the DDLs. Uh, of your table views and procedures and functions right and at the time of assessment i'll show you where that error is so what we'll do will as a first step we'll create a project here uh the 12 is a recommended version which is the latest version for the migration uh, i do not have 12 on my uh, configured system so i'll run the assessment against 11 uh, I'll choose the file which I generated uh, just a minute ago and I'll click on create an assess. Now, if you see uh, this engine in the background, it reads that file and takes out, constructs one at a time your. Uh, table one at a time view one at a time it uh, runs the assessment and if you see how quickly it ran the assessment right now this is the project that we created and this is uh, this has total 38 objects in it it says two failed and 94 percent is the compatibility ratio with adb process if i would like to see the detail which one are the failed one as i said i purposely failed one view here And that failed view is my beaten test view. So if I click on uh, this tree, this node, it will tell me what is my source detail and what is my target detail. So it clearly says in the output window that this function is not compatible with the EFAS. What you could do? You could simply go and check the knowledge base uh, article out here. And we try to keep uh, adding the new and new knowledge base as in when we do the releases. Uh, so one thing it says in Oracle, BTN function works like this, but to make it work in advanced server, you have to use this kind of syntax. So what I can do is simply go ahead and edit this. I make this change. I click on reassess. I would like to see whether my changes are working is right or not. And see here, it has a dependency function as well, dependency test uh, view also, which is depending on beaten test. I forgot to show you that. But once uh, this beaten test succeeds, it will automatically reassess the dependency test as well, and it will mark them as succeed. So if I just refresh the tree, I see there are no failed objects now, right? And if I Go back to my project. It is now 100% compatible. As a next step, what I would do is I'll go and click on export. I'll download this serial file as a set for the HR. That will download me the Oracle compatible details. I'll show you this serial as well. That. Uh, this has all the repair handler comments as well, which I mentioned in these in the slides. Okay, let me open up the center server out here. So if you, if you all can see, I have only two schemas here. I'll go ahead and and run my downloaded file here. Okay, so this is how the uh, your uh, uh, target compatible file looks like. So it mentions what the repair handler did and 
what and what it try to repair we have an extensive, extensive documentation around this as well that what will it did and what will be the your impact on on the on the detail for that it is not simple that uh we just can go ahead and delete that it will have some impact on it right so as you all can see uh we now have the hr schema and if i just go ahead and see any of the table uh Oops, no data out here, right? Because migration portal did only the structural migration, right? The next part, as I said, is your data migration. And data migration will take, uh, uh, will do with the help of uh, migration uh, toolkit, which is also a product from Enterprise GB. So let me check uh, cd dot slash. Uh, Connection and as can we get our properties five triple four. Okay, all right. Now, what I can do is I'll simply run an MTT command, which what this tells me is that I would like to migrate uh, my data from my source uh, database, move it to the target one only in data mode data only mode so this will uh, connect to my source database and this is all on your uh, uh, premises in your premises so you could run it on your systems actually right and we see that in just two seconds it migrated migrated all the data for those seven or eight tables of oracle right and now if i go back and query this same table i got the data and it loaded data for all the seven tables. Uh, you could export a report also uh, out from here, uh, which you, if you want, you could go and uh, share it with uh, any of your colleagues, any of your, any of your senior management. Uh, you have a portal wiki page where you could see all the details, all the minor guides, your digital extractor guides, your data migration guides. Uh, out here so let me be back to my presentation wait thank god it was successful okay so a uh, few key stats uh, and this is very important for you all to understand like how uh, we are tracking our success or how we know that we are on our right track or not right so uh, this is only for uh, of a quarter of data so the, the first quarter of 2020 from chan to march right uh we scanned or we passed almost uh nine lakh twenty three thousand eight ninety eight digital constructs right and out of which the pattern that we see is uh almost uh 60 to 70 percent your percentage of your uh, source database is made up of table indexes constraints and synonyms and there we are over and above on an average 98 percent successful so if you see the top uh, four more rows uh, four rows uh, with the percentage pass and percentage total you will get to know that we are covering uh, the ground pretty well we are working on the other aspects as well but the weightage are given to these four constructs and make them successful as much as we can uh, these are the repair handles uh, which i have shown you that how uh, well we do or how the repair handlers actually uh, are being applied so these are again the stats for the first quarter which says that uh, repair handlers to uh, 2009 which deleted the enable keyword from the source constraint was used 164000 times the repair handler for the table which deleted the enable keyword from it was used uh, 2 lakh 65 number of times so this says that yes we are seeing the traffic coming in onto the migration portal we are seeing people using it and we see uh, the repair handlers also are effectively uh, applied on the on the details to make them more adb compatible details uh this is the graph of the details uh, that we have assessed on month by month basis or maybe on the quarter by quarter basis right 
and this graph is uh, talks about the data since inception so sometime in july end or august uh, first week of august 2018 we launched migration portal for the for the entire world and since then we had been continuously seeing an increase into the details that we assess on migration portal uh, one of the stat is also that we right now have 3000 plus users on migration portal and those are the active users not that uh, uh, that they just use migration portal once and they never come back they might come back with the more schemas more details they may come back for the reassessments and uh, they may uh, refer someone else uh, and ask someone else to use migration portal so we track our success stories or success uh, details by looking at these key statistics and we are proud of uh, it so in summary and in the lesson learned is migrations are not hard uh, but again i'll say a point here that if it is easy you're the lucky one because practically i have seen that yes when you do migrate you have to take care of all the five things your schema your data your code mm -hmm. your interfaces and your application and that's not an overnight thing you have to plan your uh, strategies well you have to uh, test your migrations first on the lower level environment you can you cannot simply go and migrate your data into for the production systems you have to have your performance uh, testing done right so keeping all those things in mind you have to pick your right target which would which database or which sample database you would like to we are not talking about the hr schema or the or the other uh, orders or the shipping uh, sample database that comes with the oracle to test any of your organization or the department database whichever is the simplest one you think you could do it with the poc you should try it first on migrating with the db uh, provided tools and schema and data are only the first steps as we have seen a uh, code and drivers are a very very important ones as well uh, to make your application work fine with your migrated data the tools uh, for the operational integrations right so be it be your management tools be it be your failover tools be it be your replication tools the entire ecosystems are also essentials around any of the database and so is with the case with the edb postgres and edb offers a good set of tools as we have seen so with that uh, i think it is uh, important that you understand that how you would migrate and which database would migrate first after this webinar. I think now with this, uh, it's time for another poll question, which you would like to understand from the audience that which database they are looking up for the migration actually. So Valet, can you bring up the yes, poll question? Uh, the, the poll is launched. So uh, give everyone some time to to complete it. So, um, Prashan, it's interesting that uh, the majority, uh, eighty percent. Actually, I um, you ask which database are you looking up for migration? So eighty percent actually says that they are looking at Oracle, and then another uh, much smaller, like eleven percent, looking at um, SQL Server, and, and the rest, like MySQL, DB2, and others, are very small, about uh, between four to two percent. Wow, wow, fantastic figure, what it. That's a good and and then an interesting figure which says that we are building our tools right. We are focusing on the right database, which one to migrate first. So our entire management and the strategies and the company is focused towards helping the customers migrate from Oracle to Postgres. And that is where uh, we got the responses back from, from the audiences as well. Thank you for that.
right so as a next step right and uh, i just have this as a last slide before the q a so what are next steps after the after the uh, webinar right so go ahead and sign up for the free trainings uh, and don't think that it since it's free it may not be worth going through them it is totally worth uh, uh, sign up for them on enterprisecb.com slash free process training go through them what does process does how it does understand your target systems and yes we offer you uh, the adb offers you the trial versions which you could simply go ahead and download your advanced server which is fully functional there's no limitations of any functionality that cannot be accessed into this trial uh, version uh, you could use all this functionality for the 60 days uh, you can try it out yourself how the things work and then uh, go ahead and try migration portal the way i said uh, it's not that tough we have all seen it working in just a few minutes we were able to migrate your schema and the data though that was for uh, uh, the hr or the oracle sample database but even with your production uh, systems uh, schemas it won't be that tough we have seen great results as i have shared you the key statistics we are almost 98 percent compatible with the majority of the details of our customers so go ahead and try migration portal let us know your uh, feedback let us know your uh, your uh, if, if you're stuck anywhere uh, you could always reach out to us at info at the red enterprise tv.com or otherwise uh, uh, to any of the sales engineers uh, within enterprise tv and we'll be happy to uh, help you out with whatever scenarios or the help you would need right so with that i think it's time for the q a and we have almost approximately five minutes before we wrap up yeah, uh, thank you, Prashan. Um, it's, it's really interesting because uh, I have a few questions uh, related to schema. I'm not sure if we have the time to, to answer all, but uh, maybe I just ask the first one. Are there any limitations on the number of DDL, DDLS or schema that can be assessed on migration portal? No, no, not at all. And thanks for that question, by the way. Migration portal okay, is totally... Cool. Um, Sorry. There's no restrictions on any number of details for the schema that you could assess on migration. Okay, someone also asked, uh, is it only schema that can be migrated? Uh, what about data? Correct. So as I said, like uh, uh, migration portal uh, helps you to migrate only your schemas. For data, we do not want your data to be uploaded on onto the website, right? For that, you have to use um, ADB's migration toolkit, as, as we saw. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more uh, question on schema. Um, this person asks, how to use remap schema feature of IMPDP in Oracle in PostgreSQL? Uh, I'm not uh, sure if that is too long a question. Yeah, could you repeat that, how you could use IMPDP? Okay, how, how to use remap schema remap as in remap schema feature mm -hmm. of impdp in oracle in postgresql okay uh i'm not too sure about the impdp's uh, functionalities uh worried but uh, we can get back with the details but as far as my understanding or the logical uh, thing says is uh, impdp or the re remap of the impdp won't happen for the heterogeneous or the cross databases, but I need to check that back. I'm not too sure on that. Sure, okay, I think we only have uh, time for one last question. And this person asked about EDB Cloud Service. Uh, EDB Cloud Service is, avail is available with which cloud provider? Great, that's a great question. So uh, right now it is provided with uh, AWS. Uh, and in case if you are looking up for uh, any other cloud providers uh, solution, uh, get in touch with us. But otherwise, as I said, like the way migration portal is free or the advanced server is having the free trial of 60 days, uh, uh, you could spin a cluster yourself on on the uh, cloud database service, uh, ADB CDS, uh, free of cost as well, uh, the trial one. 
and that would be on AWS cloud. Okay, thank you very much, Prashan. Um, I think this is all the time we have, and I apologize for those questions that were that we were unable to uh, get through today. Um, but uh, please uh, know that this session has been recorded, and after the webinar, we will be sharing the recording along with the slides uh, to you as soon as possible. Also, the questions asked will be uh, there will be a link to the Q and A where you can find the answers to all the questions raised today. So once again, I want to thank everyone for your time um, during this time, and uh, do please take care and stay safe. Look out for our next webinar coming uh, next month. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, Walid. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye.